DJ All right, boys and girls, welcome to the Vespers remix of Lady Gaga Telephone. And for the first time ever, I'm going to take you behind the scenes of one of my completed and released tracks so I can show you exactly how I made it. So what we'll do is we'll start off with the beat. So I have things organized into a group track. It's one of the features I like about Ableton is you can select multiple tracks and press Command G on the Mac to group them. And it'll group them into a bus track that you can actually apply effects to. And it'll actually group everything together into kind of like a folder so you can expand or collapse it. And I find this really useful when I'm cleaning up a bunch of elements. If I just want to, say, take a look at melody elements or something like that, I can very easily just expand and collapse the different group tracks. So I'm going to expand beats here. And I'll just walk you through every single component, what effects I have, what settings I'm using, to show you how I built the track. So at the very beginning, if we just solo our beats, I have what you call a, a hall kick or a reverb kick. Basically, it's uh, one big hit with a whole bunch of reverb on it. And as you can see, I'm trimming out the bass with an EQ8. I have some chorus on it. And then I also have two compressors. One of them is a regular compressor. that's compressing it down nice and hard. And the second one is a side chaining compressor that I have side chained in from a 4 4 kick drum that I use to side chain a lot of the elements of my track. And that's one of the essential components of dance music is side chaining. It's what gives it that pumping, whooshing kind of rhythmic sound to a lot of your ambient elements like pads or hi hats or, or in this case, this hall kick. So let's just listen to that again and just watch the settings here. I find uh, on the side chaining compressor here in Ableton. I'm using a ratio of 2.0. I'm using the FF2 model. I have it cranked down the thresholds really low on it and a really deep thresholds. You get nice pumping and I have uh, you know attack and release set at uh, about 11 milliseconds and 25 milliseconds respectively. So it gives it that nice pumping sound where it's not clicking or popping and, and it's exactly what I want to hear. Good, so that's the, the impact of the track, and then a couple points throughout the track, I actually have it hit again, and in some cases I have it reverse into it as a transition element just before a, a breakdown or when some main elements come in. There's our hall kick. Now if we scan a little bit further ahead, we get into some other rhythmic elements. <laughs> And what this is, is actually, uh, it's a percussive tonal loop that comes out of FM8, Native Instruments FM8 synth, and it's called In Deep. And what I did is I actually rendered that out to audio. And then I took the audio, and I right-clicked on it, and I sliced it to a new MIDI track. And that's one of my favorite features in Ableton, because it allows you to basically lay out the different parts on a piano roll, and then you can play it. So if we open up the MIDI track, you can see I've basically programmed the slices with MIDI and we have our monitor enabled. You can just So you can see these are all the different slices of it. So I'm playing it with MIDI and I have some of the little glitchy stutters and edits in there and what I have on it for effects are I have a, a gate that's acting almost like an envelope shaper. It's basically shortening up the uh, each individual hit. And then I have a couple of Sugar Bites Wow filters. And what these guys are doing is they have LFOs on them and they're slowly trimming the frequency range. I have one that's running the Band Crusher preset, which is a kind of a band pass combined with Bit Crusher filter. And then the next one is actually just acting as a high pass with a little bit of drive on it. Then I have a, another bit crusher, some compression, and usually what I do on pretty much every element is I'm trimming out the bass with the EQ8 here, so I'm basically rolling off the bass and I'm trimming out some of the high end as well, because the, with the bit crushers on there, the high end tends to get a little bit shrill. So here is our... <laughs> All 
right, so let's move on to the next section. Next element to come in are the hi-hats. And in this case, I wanted to get a kind of interesting hi-hat sound. Let's just listen to them. So what this is, is it's a, a hi-hat sample that's been loaded into Ableton's sampler. And I'm doing a few things to modulate it here. First of all, I have a gate, and the gate is shortening the sample. So it's cutting off the decay of the sample. You could also do this with an envelope, but in this case, I just chose to do it with a gate. I'm running compression on it. So it gives it that really ticky sound. It's only letting the first 11 milliseconds through, so it's a fairly short attack on it. And then again, I'm taking the EQ8, and I'm virtually high-passing it. I have it rolled right up to 4.34 kilohertz, so that's just letting just the high-end tickiness through the hats. And again, I'm using a wow filter, and I'm simulating, or trying to simulate, I should say, the, the kind of humanness of the hat. So when they when a human drummer is playing, they don't always hit everything at exactly the same the same hardness, right? The velocity. And also the harder they tend to hit elements, the brighter the hi-hats sometimes get. So I'm using the LFO on the wow filter to modulate a low pass filter so it's giving it some sparkle to the top end with the resonance and it's actually rotating the cutoff up and down a little bit in the kind of 14 to 16 kilohertz range so it gives it some brightness and then backs off the brightness a little bit as it plays and as you can see I'm also using the same automation from the LFO on the master volume which is again simulating a uh, randomness kind of a factor so not every hits at the same volume it's uh, almost very similar actually to how you could achieve with side chaining using a kick drum. A lot of people side chain their hi hats with a kick drum. So this is basically just doing the same thing. And then I've slapped an auto panner on there. And the auto panner basically just takes the hi hat hits and is rotating them from left to right um, by a certain amount. So I'm, I'm using a amount of just over 50% here. So it's not hard panning though, but it is rotating them back and forth in the frequency spe or in the, um, in the stereo spectrum. And I'm using a rate of 3 eighths. So it doesn't stay consistent. It's not like one quarter, one half or one. I'm using 3 eighths. So it kind of rotates over time. DJ, that's best, 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 that's best,